Elon Musk is probably one of the top 10 most polemic people of our age. The man who brings us the driverless car, underground highways, and of course, the vacations to the planet Mars, has another little project, one that sends shivers down the backs of all sci-fi horror fans who are terrified of an all-powerful artificial intelligence that will one day control every aspect of our lives. We're talking about the Neuralink an interface which connects the human brain directly to the internet. Is it a good idea to become connected directly to the internet through our brains? Common sense and hundreds of sci-fi horror movies would make us believe that it's not. Now, let's put away superstitious claptrap and learn the true facts behind Neuralink implants. How does it work? Nerve cells, called neurons, send and receive data. Generally, neurons have three parts. A dendrite, which receives a signal, a cell body, called a soma, which computes the signal, and an axon, which sends a signal out to the other neurons or cells. Neurons connect to each other to send and receive signals through axon-dendrite connections called synapses. Synapses then release neurotransmitters. These small molecules bind to receptors on dendrites, opening channels that cause electrical current to flow across the neuron's membrane. When a neuron receives the right combination of input, it initiates an action. Neuralink places electrodes near neurons in order to detect actions. The information is decoded, and then it can be used to reprogram actions. Neuralink is building tiny devices that are potentially going to be implanted in our brains. It's a little chip with thousands of wires measuring one-tenth the width of a human hair. Founded in 2017, Musk said the technology will be useful in curing certain brain disorders, but there are many more applications available, including as an aid to astronauts during space travel. The current tech involves drilling actual holes into a subject's skull in order to insert the ultra-thin threads. Future incarnations will shift to using lasers to create tiny holes which are much less invasive and essentially not felt by a patient. Neuralink has already installed its technology on laboratory rats with performance level that exceed today's computer systems in terms of data transfer. The data from the rats was gathered via a USB-C port in the heads, and it achieved about 10 times more than what the best current sensors can provide. Neuralink's advances versus current BCI methods also include the combined thinness and flexibility of the threads used. But one scientist wondered about their longevity when exposed to the brain, which contains a salt mix fluid that can damage and ultimately degrade plastics over time. The plan is also that the electrodes implanted in the brain will be able to communicate wirelessly with chips outside the brain, providing real-time monitoring with unprecedented freedom of motion without any external wires or connections. The Impact Elon Musk has already invested $100 million to fund Neuralink. Musk is outspoken about the fact the size is essential because nobody wants large chips implanted in our brains, right? On April 9th, Neuralink posted a video to YouTube showing a monkey playing a video game using only his mind without a physical controller. By just thinking about it, the monkey bounces a virtual ball back and forth. Musk also said that Neuralink really is about figuring out a way to achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. He went on to say, this is not a mandatory thing. This is something you can choose to have if you want. But is it? What if in the future Neuralink is mandated for the medical safety of its users? The principal aim of Neuralink is medical. There are plans to use a robot that Neuralink has created resembling a sewing machine to implant the threads, which are incredibly thin, about one-third the diameter of the thinnest human hair, deep within a person's brain tissue where it will be capable of performing operations at very high speed. Neuralink scientists have been trying to do damage control with the press. In a press briefing, spokesmen for the company announced that they have a long way to go before they can get anywhere near offering a commercial service. 
They also feel that it's important to disclose their investigations so they'll be better able to work out in the open and publish scientific briefs, which is definitely necessary for studies that require as much interaction with the academic and research communities. Neuralink co-founder and president Max Hodak told the New York Times that he's optimistic Neuralink's tech could theoretically see use somewhat soon in medicine, including potential applications enabling amputees to regain mobility via use of prosthetics and reversing vision, hearing, or other sensory deficiencies. It's hoping to actually begin working with human test subjects as early as next year, in fact, including via possible collaboration with neurosurgeons at Stanford and other institutions. Elon Musk is bankrolling the majority of the company as well as acting as its CEO, with 100 million of the 158 million it's raised so far coming from monies siphoned from SpaceX and Tesla profits. Neuralink has 90 employees, and it's always looking for new talent. Objections Many folks feel that Neuralink will only be available to the ultra-rich. Is Neuralink the beginning of a technological caste system where the poor will have unenhanced minds? In the time when Bill Gates is promoting vaccines, conspiracy theorists believe that technology like Neuralink is actually the work of the literal devil. Other people are afraid that a direct link from the internet to our brains could be hacked, with the possibility of creating actual zombies, automatons, who have no more power to act for themselves than a robot or cyborg. Certainly, the possibility for dystopian nightmares exists when we begin to think of ways to connect our brains directly to the internet. But is it really all that bad? If we could cure cancer, heart disease, blindness, and even aging through such technology, would the benefits be worth the risk?